The race is not to the swift, Ecclesiastes 9, we read in verses 11 and 12. Father God, we give you thanks for your word this morning. As we get ready to come into your presence, Father God, get into your word that we may know, Father God, know it more, the greater understanding, greater wisdom, greater revelation. So line upon line, precept upon precept, rightly divide your word of truth in our hearts and our minds. Let it be as fire, Father God, that destroy, Father God, everything, Father God, that's trying to bring blockage to our understanding, that we may know and understand and be transformed today by your word as you feed us, O oh God. Milk, bread, meat, and strong meat to all that I need this morning that the thirsty Father God will be quenched today, that the hungry will be filled, Father God. Give us, Father God, strong meat, a strong milk, strong bread, strong meat and strong meat, Father God, that we, Father God, truly get an understanding that will change our lives forever, that will cause, Father God, a greater awareness of you, your word, and how real you are, and how much we need this word to live by. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ecclesiastes 9, reading verses 11 and 12. Ready, read. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in the evil net, and as the birds are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snare in an evil time. When it falleth suddenly. Amen. So now let's go to verse 5. That's Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5. Ready, read. For the living know not which shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have any more a reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. One more time. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. Amen. Lord, thank you. The race is not to the swift. We live in a life that we don't know what tomorrow holds. We can make our plans, but only God knows the outcome. So as we run our race, know for sure we're going to come up against situations. That don't mean we stop. Because we have time set to reach and accomplish certain things in our lives, and those times have passed. It says the race is not to the swift. So some of us might want to be a, uh, have our home, have family by the age of 25, 30, 40, even 50, and we are approaching those years where we have already passed that and we haven't accomplished them. No, for sure the race is not to the swift. So we have to be reminded that we are in a world not by ourselves. Man or the human race are not the only ones that are here. There are also fallen angels. There are also God's angels. So they got righteous um, um, angels that belong to God. And then we got the evil angels, what are called demons or devils, the word of God calls them. And they all are here. God's angels are here to help us. They're here to protect us. It says, at least we hit our foot against a stone. God said they will hold us up with their hands. So we are... In a battle. Whether we understand this or not, we are in a battle. And so when we see things happen in our lives to try to set us back or to try to hold us or try to delay us, 
know for sure that there are forces that are working against us. And it isn't just happening because it can happen. But they are actually resistance. They are forces that are fighting us. They're called evil spirits or foul spirits or demons or devils or Satan. The kingdom of darkness is really, really out there trying to stop and destroy or actually I should say steal, kill and destroy mankind. Satan is out there real busy. And so when we see our lives being held hostage and we don't understand why we're still in the same position or if we're moving we're moving very slow or we keep repeating the same things over and over there is a battle going on there is a battle going on and ecclesiastes 9 12 what we just read says for man also knoweth not his time and it says as the fishes that are taken in an evil net and as the birds that are caught in the snare listen closely so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them so god is saying to us that just how fishes are caught in an evil net men are caught the same way just how birds are caught in a snare men are caught the same way so even though you don't see a natural net or a natural snare a snare is like a little cord you have a little opening you take you put your foot in it snapshot and so you're caught so even though you don't see it with natural eyes don't mean that you're not caught don't mean that you're not in an evil net if a bird is caught in a snare, can it continue to fly? No. No. If a fish is caught in a net, can it continue to swim freely like it wanted to or was? No. So there have been restraints. There have been limits placed on them because of what caught them or what took, a, a held, what took hold of them. And it says, so are the sons of men snared so god is saying that men can be snared men can be caught but he's not talking about a physical snare a physical net he's talking about spiritual things now he's talking about what can catch man and cause man not to move and advance in life the way that god intends for man to move and so when man is caught, then there are restraints placed on him. So it's difficult now for man to move and accomplish and be what God has placed, us on, placed him on this earth to be. To do what God has placed him on this earth to do. Why? Because we have been uh, limited. So even though you might not be in, a, in jail, you are not in a physical jail. Chances are that you are in a spiritual jail. And that come about when we disobey God. When we do not do what God tells us to do. God in Deuteronomy, let's go to Deuteronomy 30. God was giving Moses, well, giving the children of Israel through Moses the laws, and he's reminding them that, look, you are my children and I'm taking you into the promised land and as I get ready to take you into the promised land in order for you to keep the blessings that I am giving to you there is the laws that I'm what I've given to you already you must keep them you must keep these laws my statutes my precepts so that you may live and your children may live in the land that I am taking you. So he was telling the children of Israel, stay away from the practices of the people in the land where I am blessing you and giving you. In other words, what he is saying to Israel, the land of milk and honey, 
that I am giving, that I have given to you and I am getting ready to take you into for you to possess it so they become yours. They are evil practices that they're doing. Idolatry. They're doing evil in there. And he said because of their evil, because of their wickedness that they did, I am taking them out of that land which belongs to me and I am giving it to you. And he is saying to them that if you turn away from my laws, my precepts, my commandments, and you go and do what they're doing, then guess what? I will do the same to you what I did to them. I will take you out of this land. And so he has given them, uh, gave them a warning. So let's read in Deuteronomy 30. Read in verses 19 and 20. Deuteronomy chapter 30, read verses 19 and 20. Ready, read? I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose that both now and my seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is the life and the sleep of death, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thine fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Amen. So 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I, God, have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. So God set them before his children when he told them to look here. 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou may cleave unto him. So God is saying, today, if you choose to keep my commandments, my laws, my statutes, cleave unto me, hear my voice, and always obey me, then you have chosen life. But if you do not obey me, then you've chosen death. And so this death God is saying to him, or to Israel it says this day I have I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death this is not physical death he's talking about he's talking about spiritual death so spiritual death come to all who sin all who disobey God's commandments Jesus summed them up which is thou shall love the Lord thy God love thy heart soul mind and thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. Those are the commandments that we are to keep. And when we don't do them, then we bring death. In other words, we have chosen death. So when we disobey God, whenever we disobey his commandment, we have chosen death. And it's a spiritual death. And that spiritual death actually causes Satan to come now and to steal, to kill, and destroy. So it's the open door that causes our life to be caught, snared. So when we try to get ahead in life, we open up a business and we have to close it because there's no profit, there's no customers, nothing happens. We are on a job, on a good paying job, all of a sudden, good employee, either the job closed down, made you redundant, or they let you go because someone lied on you. You find yourself, doors closing when you are, have the qualification and they say, oh, I can't hire you because you're overqualified. Mm. And so all of these are signs that Satan is now working against you. You buy a brand new vehicle or you bought a vehicle, all of a sudden you write off. Not get the value of it, stuck with it alone or stuck walking again. Go to school, start school, and almost just about finished, door closed, can't finish. All of these is showing that your life 
has been snared or caught in an evil net. Every time you try to save and say, okay, this is the down payment for my home, or this is, I'm going to buy pay cash for my land, or all of a sudden something, emergency happened, bang, money gone. What causes it? What happened? You save and you're good save, and all of a sudden get something, see your eye, and all of a sudden you run after it. Take everything you have. And so all of these are signs that your life has been caged like a bird. Let's go to, thank you Holy Spirit, Psalm 124, Psalm 124, Psalm 124. Read in verse 7, Psalm 124, read in verse 7. Ready, read? Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. So the only way we can now free ourselves is by knowledge through the word of God. As children of God, some of us are still slain, but Jesus, our redeemer, he redeemed us from the curse of the law. So the curse that caused us to be snared, caused us to be caught in a net, we have been delivered from them as children of the Most High God. But a lot of us who don't know, we're still sitting there, being freed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we're still sitting there because, see, Satan isn't trying to let us go. And the Word of God says in Proverbs 11, let's go there. Proverbs 11. Read in verse 9. 11, 9. Ready, read. A hypocrite with his mouth destroy his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So we as the children of God, if we see that our lives are still being held hostage, we are still not moving, there's still limitations, there's still things on us. It's because of what we did in the past, not because of what Jesus did, and the fact that we lack knowledge. So if our souls are now escaped as children of the Most High God, our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers, which is Satan, the snare is broken and we are escaped. So if we, as the children of God, redeemed by Christ, and we are still limited, why are we still limited? When clearly, let's go to Galatians, clearly the word of God shows us that we have been set free. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Reading 13 and 14, Galatians chapter 3, reading 13 and 14. Ready, read? Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is every one that hang on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So Jesus, at Calvary, buried, risen on the third day, redeemed us by his blood. So by Jesus' blood, we have been purchased. We have been purchased by Jesus' blood. 
And Jesus redeemed us from that law, all of the laws that brought curses on us. So we being children of God, we have been free, we've been set free from all the curses. And on top of that, let's go to Galatians, Galatians, sorry. Let's go to Galatians chapter three, Galatians three, no, Galatians two. Galatians chapter two, Galatians chapter 2, read in verse 12, Galatians chapter 2, read in verse 12, and actually let's go from 13, let's do 13 and 14, because we have already been risen. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2, read in verses 13 and 14, ready, read. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. Amen. So 13 says, and you, meaning saints of God, children of God, a child of God, being dead in sin. When you were dead in sin, you were not with God. When you were dead in sin, God quickened you. Meaning that when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God blotted out all of the handwriting of the ordinances that was against you. That's all the laws. When we'd broken the law, when we'd walked in sin, when we were not children of God yet, when we were not saved yet, the law spoke against us. Satan had a legal right to come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When we did not belong to Christ. But when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he redeemed us from all of that. So we should be living a, a life full with abundance, full with freedom, full with successes, prosperity, wealth, riches, and health. Every promise that God gave to the children of, of, of God, they were all good. And so when we do not experience these in our lives as children of God, then we are missing something because it's through knowledge that we are delivered. So knowledge must come and deliver us because if we don't know what rightfully belongs to us, how do we know how to take possession of it? How do we know? So Satan is still now holding things that really belong to us because it says, and you being dead in sin. So if we're no longer dead in sins, but have been redeemed, and on top of that, God himself, he canceled, erased the debt that was against us. So if the slate have been cleaned, and there's no sin, no ordinances, nothing that's working against us, then we should not be limited. There should be no limitations on us. Everything we set our hands to do, supposed to prosper. And so when we go back and we go back and we study let's go back to Ecclesiastes and we look at Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes 9 9 Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 12 says at the bottom, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth upon him suddenly. So, we being sons of God, children of God, it says evil net and snares are men caught in. So we now have to remove them. 
It's for us to remove them. Why? Because we've been redeemed. We've been redeemed. When God gave Israel the laws, the precepts, and commandments, he said, this day have I set before you life and death. So when we were sinners, we chose death. Now that we are born again, we should be in life. So everything in our lives is supposed to be resemble life. And so we now have some things to do or some work to do, which is we need to remove the snare. We need to break the net. And we, if we're sitting in prison houses, we need to ask God to destroy them. Because if we look at Ecclesiastes 5, let's read it again. 5 says, For the living know that they, for the living know that they shall die. Pay attention to this piece. But the dead know nothing. The dead know nothing. When we were in sin, the word of God we just read in Galatians says, we were dead in sins. And it says here, the dead know nothing. So we now being sons of God, when we chose death, then we now, Satan I should say, now cause this to work against us in a way where the dead don't know nothing. So even though we're living, we're just as though we're dead. Jesus. Not knowing anything. And it also says, but the dead know nothing. And it says, neither or neither shall they, no, neither have they any more a reward. So when you're supposed to be collecting your reward as a child of God, it says you have no more reward. So see, when we're under that curse, there was no reward for us. So if we don't remove death, then we won't see the reward that's released to us. Say they have a legal right. They say, you look here, but they know nothing down there. Mm -hmm. Say the dead don't know nothing. Jeez. So we sit in churches and we know nothing. Why? Because we were once dead. Wow, come on. And so when we sit in a message, go over our head. Why? Because you're dead. Oh. The dead know nothing. Oh, and so Satan used that against us. Oh. Well, I don't understand. I don't understand. Can't understand. Oh. Why? Satan used the word of God. Your word say, well, they chose dead. They know nothing. And it'll be just read. Oh. Through knowledge oh. shall it just oh. be delivered. Oh. So if you don't know what happened to you before you were saved, before you were born again, and you don't know what you've been redeemed from, how do you know how to live as a child of God? How do you know what to get what rightfully belongs to you? If you are dead in a net still, in a snare still because you haven't broken them and removed them as a child of God. See, you are in a battle and the enemy is in there trying to let you go. And so when we sit down and we look at our lives and we keep repeating the same cycle over and over, we got a great job, but yet there's nothing left to say, move forward in life, to occupy or possess your possessions. Why? Because of what happened to us, some of us before we were born. In our bloodline, we inherited curses. Because God told them not to go and worship idols. Not to go and worship idols. And if you worship idols, if you do not worship the Lord God, then you have chosen death. And so a lot of us inherited death. A lot of us brought death. A lot of us went to schools and teachers spoke death. Some of us sit in, the, in, in churches and the pastor spoke death. Some of us live in house, homes and the parents spoke death. So death is everywhere, hey? And so, what it says? And the dead know nothing. And so we fight and fight and fight and yet we don't know nothing. Why? Because it's the Lord that was put in motion by God. 
that when you choose life, you get the blessings. And when you choose death, you inherit the curses. And so us now as children of God, in, in, in Galatians, let's go back there for the ones who might have missed, was in here or missed it just now. Let's go back to Galatians. Galatians. Let's go back to Galatians 13. Galatians, um, sorry, 2.13. Galatians 2.13. Look at what it says. And you being dead in your sins. Now, how could you be alive and dead at the same time? Because you are three in one. You are spirit, soul, and body. So your spirit, your soul, your soul... Your soul is what was caged. What was caught in the snare. We just read that. So when you were dead in sin. Every curse that God spoke came on us. Or we say it had a legal right to bring by. Because we chose death. Whether we knew we were choosing it or not, we chose that. Let's go back to Deuteronomy for the one so we can catch up. Because we got to be delivered here today. Amen. It's not about coming in here and not, and not being delivered and set free. There's no use coming here getting this word, getting this knowledge and don't go all the way. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 30. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 30, let's read verses 19 and 20 again. Deuteronomy 30, read in 19 and 20. Ready, read. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life. That thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Amen. This day have I said before you death and life, blessing and cursing. So when we choose life now as children of God, then the blessing should follow. So if your life is not showing blessings following, then chances are you're still in that evil net, and you're still snared, because it's through knowledge shall you be delivered. Not the fact that you are a child of God alone. That's just the beginning. Because being a child of God, you are risen and seated with Christ in heavenly places. But it's on you now to know how to be set free. Because God, we're still in Colossians. Go back to Colossians 2 and 14 says. Colossians 2, 14. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances. That was against us, which was contrary to us. So blotting out meanings that, meaning that God forgave all of the sins that were against us, all of the penalties that were against us, the sins and iniquities that we did have been erased, meaning the penalties that brought, that came when we sinned. So if God have blotted them out, in other words, he have canceled them, he have erased them, he have blotted them out, he have forgiven them. He took the debt. So now we are no longer under no curse. And see, a lot of Christians understand this, but they don't know now that you still got to do deliverance. Through knowledge now, I have to deliver you. They say through knowledge shall it just be delivered. And that means you got to do some deliverance. Yes. yes. You can't just sit back and say, well, God redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. Yes, he did. And Christ blotted out. Yeah, God um, blotted them out. Yes. But if you know that 13 come before 14, eh? It says, and you being dead in your sins. 
So you were dead in your sins. So Satan used that against us that we know nothing. What else it says? Let's go back now to Ecclesiastes 9 and 5. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. And it says, neither or neither have they any more a reward. And God says, when you are diligent, he will reward you. And so when we don't see reward come, when we don't see blessing come, it's because we have not come out of the evil net. We have not broken the snare. We have not broken or removed the spirit of death or death and hell from us. And so we need to now move them because it says no more remorse, no more reward when we're looking for the reward. He said, I am a reward of them that diligently seek me. I am a reward of them who diligently seek me. So you're entitled. And also says, for the memory of the dead is forgotten. So the people who are supposed to remember you, who are supposed to help you, who are supposed to know you, Come on. forgot you. You have been forgotten because of death that you chose and that I chose. God, well, how come they remember me? How come they call me back for God? They say they can do this for me. And, they, wow. and all of a sudden you say, oh, I forget about you. Wow. And everything finished. Oh, I remember you. How much time you had that yes. in your life? I forgot about you. Why? The curse. Oh, my Lord. What we chose. As Christians, it still happens to us. Why? Through knowledge, you'll be delivered. Delivered. He came to set the captives free. And that means we were captives. Captives are kept where? In cages, in holes, in prisons, in graves, in tunnels, in locker rooms. Prisons. They're all called prisons. Anything to lock you up, to put you away. And so we walk around in life and trying to figure out why. Some of us still got blinders on, we don't even see. Having eyes, they see not. Having ears, they hear not. These are all from the curses. All from the curses. And some of us have a job, and we've been on a job for five years, ten years. And go back in your memory. Go back. Roll back the curtain. What all have you accomplished in that five years, ten years? What are the assets that you have lined up? Think about it. What do you have to show for all your hard work? $1,000 a week, $500 a week, $700 a week, $300 a week. What have you gotten? Think about it. The car, you got to push the key and turn it up, turn it to the left, and then turn it on. I had one like that. I had one like that. That's why I could tell you about it. Oh, pump that gas. You got to pump the gas. Don't pump the gas. Oh, pump the gas. Oh, no, you're going to flood the engine. Don't do that. Oh, stop it. I had one of them cars. So I could talk about it. I ain't talking about you. I talking about me. Oh, I, mean, I can't let you that car because you have to know how to drive it. No, no, no. I, I don't put it on the Okay, can I do that? Oh, that car ain't working. What happened? I tell you, you can't drive it. You got to know the secret to driving the car. So you roll back the curtain and find out what's going on as a child of God. Why am I going through this? Because of things that we have not been delivered from. Amazing. For the living know that they will die or shall die. But the dead know nothing. The dead know nothing, neither have they any more a reward. So when your boss is supposed to reward you, when your parents are supposed to reward you, when your good work is supposed to pay off and reward you, nothing. Because it's the word of God. So we wondering why we're working harder than anybody, the lazy, late person coming, promotion and race, they get the same race as you. Some get better race than you say, what happens? 
Oh, will I forget about you? I remember you. Why? It's the word. No reward. No reward. How could everybody get a raise? Over a hundred people, and you're the only one ain't gonna raise. Like I said, I could talk. <laughs> everybody, you're the only one. Everybody could go to the bank and get approved for houses and lands. You're the only one. You've been approved for a house, and the house can't come. You better prove for the mortgage and, and, and you can't get the house. Why? Forgotten? Forgotten? For the memory of them, the dead, is forgotten. No one remembers you. And when they do remember, you get the leftover. When you should have been first in the line. You come because of the curse. They come because of the curse. Deuteronomy, it comes because of the curse. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, rebuke, and all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thine doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. See, whenever we forsaken God, we put a curse on our hands. Whenever we decide we're going to try to live and not live according to the word of God, then we come under curse all over again. And so as a child of God, we must stay in the word so that we are delivered and set free. Death should not still be reigning over us. We should be reigning over death. Why? Because of who we are. Let's go to Revelation 1. Revelation, the book of Revelation 1, read in verse 18. Revelation 1, 18. Ready, read. I am he that liveth, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. One more time. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So who have the keys of hell and of death? Jesus. Amen. So if Jesus have the keys of hell and death, that means there should be no more death over you as a child of God. He took it. He have them. And we are seated in him. And we are in Christ right now. Right now. And so when we don't see naturally movement, advancement, life should be coming to us. The bank should be calling because you are what they call an A1 customer. They should be coming to you and say, hey, come borrow this $100,000. We, we don't need no kind of collateral. Just come because of who you are. Where you could go to the bank and they can't prove your credit card, a thousand dollar limit, I'm wrong. Hard as you working as long as you've been working. Oh, sorry. Denied. Why? Because you've been forgotten. No reward. And you're dead. But glory be to God, our Redeemer, our Savior. He have the key to death and hell. He have the key to death and hell. Let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16, reading verse 18. Matthew 16, 18. Ready, read. And I say also, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. And upon this rock, upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, this knowledge, I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. So hell shall not be prevailing against you. Some people, you get in an argument, you tell them, go to hell. You think that's right for you to tell someone, go to hell? And guess what? You know what happened? Because you say that you send them to hell now. It's 
cage these people's soul, man. So imagine when they tell you go to hell. Why you think you can't make it? These aren't just words, you know. Satan pushing them in your, in your head, in your mind, for you to speak it out of your mouth because once you speak it, it's agreement. Once you speak it, it's agreement. He say death and life in the power of your tongue. Again, we speak it of only two things, you know. Death and life or life and death. So when you speak and you say go to hell or someone tell you go to hell, how are you going to make it in hell? Is anything good in hell? No. How much time someone spoke it over you and you people say, oh hell, oh hell. Why are you calling hell? Satan. 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 We got to be so careful. We are in a war. It's spiritual and we must know how to fight. Teach our hands to warn our fingers to fight, O oh God. But it says, Upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Satan should not be prevailing against you. As a child of God, you are now, you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You have been redeemed, set free, delivered. And so now you should see blessing, life and blessing, not death and curses but life and blessings. So look at your life. Do you see the blessings coming on you and overtaking you? Because all God say for us to do is to obey him. Keep his commandment. Love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what he say. And as long as you are doing that, then you should see the blessing come on you and overtake you. But when we sit back and we murmur and we complain and we don't pay attention, and go and address all the old things so that our future and our, t and our days are far better than our yesterdays. So knowing now that we must deal with death, because see, we were dead in sins, it's see. We were dead in sins. And so of course, death. So as children of God, we must remove or break death and hell so that one we may be seen and remembered two that we will start to see and receive rewards and that we may know so we have to do this today Amen. so that we are not again like the word of God says in 12 you see I see 9 12 for man also knoweth not his time as the fishes that are taken in an evil net uh, as the birds that are caught in the snare. So are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. And it says it falls suddenly. So you don't want nothing sudden falling on you. You don't want to no longer be in a net or in a snare. So our saints of God and we cannot, we need to break the limits. We need to ask God to remove all the curses that we have put there unknowingly, and chances are unknowingly. Anyone in authority spoke evil over you, then because they have authority over you, it will stick because of the position that they hold or the office that they hold. And the and, and sad thing is a lot of our parents put so much curses on, on us. And of course, most of those curses come because we were obedient. We were doing something to tick them off. And out of anger, they spoke. And they spoke whatever Satan put in their heart to say, or put in their minds, I should say, to speak over us. Never be nothing in life you're going dead on a motorbike. They dead, man. Anybody say those things to you? Cancel them. Cancel them. Keep going down the road. Mary, Mary, going to set you up. They all curses. Listen, 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 listen. Always listen when people are speaking to you. And you also listen when people are speaking at you. Because a lot of times Satan using them to scare to you. Speaking curses. Words are very powerful. Words are so powerful that you don't need to pick up a, a, a gun to go to battle. You just need to speak. You don't have to ever pick up a gun to go to, to war. You just need to speak. You just need to pray. When, Baal, when Balak tried to um, put a curse on God's children, God said through that evil prophet that 
I can't curse them because there's nothing against them. In other words, they were righteous before God. So even though that king, wicked king, wanted to put a curse on them, it couldn't come because they were righteous. They were living in righteousness. So whenever you live in righteousness and Satan may try to cause someone to put a curse on you or speak evil against you, curse causeless shall not come. That's the word of God. And so we have to just learn the word, trust the word, do what the word says. And that's what he tells us to do. Obey his voice. Listen to him. Do what he say do so that we may live and have that abundant life. And so if you see patterns still in your line, in, in your life, get rid of it. Because if it keeps reoccurring, it's a it's it's a covenant, it's an evil covenant or an altar that is speaking, that is causing it to keep happening to you. Get rid of the get rid of it. You might have to pray that prayer more than once. You might have to pray that prayer more than ten times, but you stay at it. You keep going at it until you see it's gone. Poverty and lack should not be on any children of God because Jesus became poor, that through his poverty we might be rich. But there's also something he said we must do. Help the poor. He said, they that help the poor or help the poor shall see no lack. But he said, they that keep from, from giving to the poor shall see many a curse. And so we have to know the word that look here, everything we have is not for us. He called us to help people. And so as people help, as we help people, he help people help us. So we have to, like I say, learn the word, stay in the word, obey his commandments. Stop trying to hold up on that little couple of dollars. Because if you ain't taking out that 10% and giving to God first, the whole 100% Satan is going to just snatch from you. If you're not giving offerings and giving the arms, how are you moving forward? Go through the word and find out what you're supposed to do with what you have. God say he minister seed to the sower. He say he minister seed to the sower. In other words, he give what you have to you. But he said in that, some is to eat and some is to sow and he'll multiply what you sow. So you can't be looking for from something to come from God if you're not releasing what's in your hands. Let's get it right in 2023. Let's make sure the blessing come on us and overtake us. Do good, the word of God say. Do good. Learn to do good. Cast your bread, he say, on the waters, and after many days it shall return. Truly the race is not to the swift. It's not to the swift. Don't think because you give yourself until you reach 55 to have everything set. No means you're going to get that 55. You might get there before then. You might get there after then. But you make sure you do it in God and you continue at your deliverance. Continue going at your deliverance. Not every day. Every, one day. One day. You start to see what God has given to you. Provided you are consistently doing the word. Consistently practicing the word. Consistently loving and asking God to grow you and to strengthen you and to increase you. And I'm not talking about tangible things, earthly possessions. They're earthly things. You have them. The earth is the Lord's fullness thereof. You are God and therefore they belong to you. He say have dominion over the earth, everything in it. The waters and the air, which is the birds. If he give you dominion over them, who they belong to? You. So you don't have to go running down trying to get it. They belong to you. Provided you find the formula in the word of God and how to get it, it will come on you and overtake you. But once you find it, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And cons consistently do it. Don't mess. Don't mess. And if what you're giving, if it go, and you need more, say, God, increase me with more. You know what he can do? He can say, okay, now increase what you do. Give it. See, so for you to get more, you give more. You can't want a thousand dollars and you've never sown a thousand. How could you want a thousand and you don't even reach a thousand yet? How could you want 10,000 you've never reached 1,000 yet? God is a God of order. We must learn this order. Have a need and he will meet it. So we're going to now 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Break out of these prison houses that we have been placed in when we were dead in our sins. Now that we are saints of God, children of God, let's get rid of death. Let's get rid of hell. Let's get rid of all the snares, all the nets, all the prison houses. And one thing I love about God, once you know what's holding you, Satan have to let you go. So the minute you we pray these prayers, you are loose. Now he gonna come back and make you think you ain't loose. Don't fall for that trap. Jesus, when Mary and Martha's brother died, Lazarus, and God came and he told them to roll away the stone from in front of the tomb. And he said to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came forth out of that grave. When he came, mind you, he was dead four days. So, when Christ called his name, he came out of the grave. He came forth. So that means he was alive. He was living. But he was still in bondage. He still had that wrap around him. Would they wrap him up like a mummy? So even though he was alive, he was still in bondage. Still bound. He was still bound. Hand and feet came up. It. He said to the people, loose him and let him go. See, we have to be loose and let go. Come on. Until we know that we are free and we are free from all bondages, we will be like Lazarus, alive, but bound. Bound. Too many of God's children are alive but bound. We got to take this serious. And when you come out, don't go quick to go back in. Be careful of what you say and what you do to people. Be careful of what you hear people speak over you and you break and reject everything that is not of God. Amen. Don't settle for less. Don't let fear come on you after you get this word and cause you to go back into bondage. You have been freed and set free according to God's words. We have been redeemed. Christ took your place. He took your place. So that you may live. And to have that abundant life. Don't settle for a small life, a small existence. If you settle for that, that's all you'll end up with in this life. Don't settle for that. You ever take a ride around our beautiful island? Let me tell you something. There is some mansions I saw west. Jesus of mercy. I say, God? You say, cover not a man's things. I want my own. Let your mind see the best life for you. Get out of that camp road mentality. Get out of that, I don't have enough mentality. Get out of that, I can't afford it mentality. Get out of that, you ain't ready yet. Come on, man, guys. Our beautiful island. You ever see those beautiful yachts? Jesus. You ever pass Odyssey? You ever been in Odyssey? Yes. Have you ever been in Odyssey and seen those jets? Yes. Private jets? I ain't talking about the civil aviation part. You ever see that? You ever see? Take note of how the rich live. They only, they only own the best of the land. You ever notice that? They only own the best of the land. Unless there's a curse on them. The ones who do not curse on, they own the best of the land. The mansions built on the water, near the water. The yachts, some of them park in the back of the yard. And it's not that you're running after things. It's that the earth belongs to you. 
because God say have dominion. So when we limit ourselves and we can't see us possessing the land, then we're saying, God, you ain't big enough to get me there. You ain't big enough to get me there. You ain't rich enough to do this for me. Our minds cage with limits, limitations. As a son and a child of the Most High God, you are wealthy, very wealthy. You are set free. And the race is not given to the swift, or the race is not to the swift. So keep moving. Keep wanting your full deliverance. But today, you will get out of that Amen. grave today. Amen. Glory Amen. be to God. Thank you, Father. So, God, we thank you. Thank you for light this morning, for it's in your light that we have light. And Father God, we repent, Father God, for not knowing this word, powerful word, deliverance word, Father God, to cause us to sit, Father God, in prison houses, causing death, that spirit of death, to reign over us still, causing us not to receive our rewards, not to be seen or remembered by men, by people, Father God. But being destroyed, being held back, being left out, being overlooked, being neglected. Father God, forgive us. For you say through knowledge shall it just be delivered. And so God, we thank you this morning for taking time out and educating us in your word. Giving us eyes to see and ears to hear. As you open up your word to us this morning, we say thank you, mighty God. For heaven truly and earth belongs to you and God you told man to have dominion over your, the works of your hands and God we repent for not having dominion over the works of your hands we repent Father God for still living Father God in bonds, ties fetters, snares prison houses, caged Father God we repent Father God as your children, Father God, we take our freedom. Jesus came to set the captives free. And whom the Son set free is free indeed. We take that freedom this morning, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we repent, Father God, for allowing Satan to still come to steal, to kill, destroy Israel's our lives. We repent, Father God. For Jesus came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. And so, God, we thank you for that abundant life. God, right now, Father God, we break, Father God, that spirit of death, that hole of death over us now in the name of Jesus. We break, Father God, that hole, that spirit of hell over us in the name of Jesus. For Jesus Christ, who lives and will live forevermore, holds the key of death and hell. And so, God, we reject, we cancel, we denounce, null and void all agreements that we've made with death and hell. We cancel them, we uproot them out of our foundations, amen? amen? And we call on your consuming fire to burn the evil altars to ashes in the name of Jesus. Father God, if we inherit it through our bloodline on our father's side and mother's side, God, because of sin, death, because of sin, God, for idolatry, Father God, for rebellion against your word, and of course, the generational curse to come on us that brought death, Father God. And hell, Father God. Limitations, Father God. We repent on behalf of our forefathers. Amen? Amen. We cancel null and void, uproot all evil covenants that they've made, Father God, that with hell, with death, Father God, and with limitations. We uproot them out of our forefathers' foundations forever. And God, we call on your consuming fire to burn all evil, all the stashes. Amen? Amen? In Jesus' mighty name. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. And Lord, I ask you right now, God, to remove every curse off of us. Every evil net that we have been caught in, every snare that we have been caught in, Father God, we cancel, we break, we null and void. God, destroy the net. All the nets now, Father God, that have us 
held, Father God. We have been delivered through your word. Deliverance has come through your word. And God, every evil net that have our family, that have, Father God, us, God, destroy them with your fire now in the name of Jesus. And free us right now in the name of Jesus. Every snare, God, sever, destroy. Every snare that's in our bloodline, our foundations that we might have inherited, Father God, destroy them now, Father God. Sever them, cut them, loose us out of every snare, out of, out of every net. And God, destroy them with your fire forever in the name of Jesus. And God, we declare that not another net, not another snare will ever hold us again in the name of Jesus. God, we destroy once again those evil altars, Father God, that cause us, Father God, to be held in nets and snares in the name of Jesus. And we uproot them out of our lives, out of our foundations forever. And God, if any one foundation is destroyed in here, God, we ask you to dig up those faulty foundations. Faulty foundations will not stand in times of testing. So God, in the last days, they will not stand. So every foundation, as your words say, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So Father God, every righteous person under the sound of my voice, if their foundations are destroyed, I ask you to dig them up, remove them, and rebuild our foundations, and rebuild them in the foundation of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer, who have redeemed us from the curse of the law. Become a curse himself. God, we thank you for rebuilding our foundations now, Father God. Let them be strong, God. And as we build, only let us put, build, let us only build what you have us to build on that foundation. Let them be gold, Father God, that when they, on silver, that when they go through the fire, it will last the fire in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for rebuilding our foundations now, God. If we have been placed in any other prison house, I call us out of them now, Father God. Out of the rivers, out of the caves in the rivers, Father God. In the holes, in the holes, in the waters, in the rivers, in the ocean, in the seas, Father God. Release us out of those prisons, Father God. Any graves in the sea, in the ocean, Father God, any river. Release us out of them now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Set us free from all prison houses, Father God, in the earth, Father God, in any tunnels, Father God, any cages, Father God, any prison house, Father God, even the grave, even the grave hole. Lift us out, Father God, out of every single one, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Every rock, Father God, has been placed, Father God, over any cage that we are in. Remove the rocks and free us today. And we come out of every cage that is holding us. Any grave that has been closed up, open, Father God. And I call us out of them all now in the name of Jesus. Let your fire destroy every grave, every coffin that might have us held. Destroy the coffins with your fire in the name of Jesus. And free us today, Father God. We have been set free. By the blood, purchased blood of Jesus Christ. Worthy only to do such a sacrifice on our behalf. In the name of Jesus. If we're held, Father God, in any locked room, any tree, Father God, I call us out. Let your hammer destroy every padlock and every cage, every door, every padlock, every lock be destroyed. With the harm of God in the name of Jesus. Every door that have us locked in, I command to be open in the name of Jesus. Let the prisoners go free today in the name of Jesus. For we have been redeemed, redeemed, redeemed. Ordinances, handwritings of the ordinance blotted out, forgiven. Every debt forgiven by God Almighty. In the name of Jesus. If our children... Grandchildren are caged. I call them out now in the name of Jesus. Come out of every prison house in the name of Jesus. Come out. Every small door, Father God, that have a lock and have a cage, I command it to be open now. 
I loose us and set us free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Death, you have no longer hold on us. We've chosen life and we've chosen blessing with the life. And I declare, Father God, that we will never again be forgotten. That who supposed to remember us will remember us in the seasons. That we're supposed to be remembered. And then God, all of us who've been forgotten, God, bring it back. Bring it back. Everything. Every reward, Father God, that we have not received, bring them back, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We call them back into our lives, Father God. Restore. Restore the blessings, Father God, the rewards, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And God, I declare, God, that we are no longer dead, but we live. We live. Because of the God in us, we live. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, God. I say, let us live in the name of Jesus. And we rise up out of every, off of our, out and every dunghill that we might have been in, in the name of Jesus. We rise up, out and off of every dunghill that our forefathers might have been on, Father God, that we will be seen, Father God. Oh, ye are the righteousness of you in Christ Jesus. And God, we take our rightful position in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Far above all principality and powers and might and dominion, Father God. And above every name that is above every name in the name of Jesus. And God, we take our rightful place as heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you this morning, Father God. No longer bound. God, every fetter, every chain, Father God. I command to be broken off of our hands, off of our legs, Father God, off of our ankles to be loose in the name of Jesus. Every yoke that's on our necks, every heavy weight that have us weighed down, I command you to come off. Off, off of our backs, off of our necks. We will no longer turn a load that doesn't belong to us. In the name of Jesus, we have been freed by the blood of the Lamb. Every person, every foul spirit that have us token them as animals, we're not an animal for you to ride. Get off in the name of Jesus. Out and off of us in the name of Jesus. We'll not ride our souls. We'll not ride us ever again in the name of Jesus. Off of us in the name of Jesus. Be gone. Never return in the name of Jesus. I call on the fire. God destroy every altar that have us lifting loads, heavy loads. Call on the fire of God. On every altar, never will we lift anything that doesn't belong to us ever again in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say go forward and possess the land that Christ has given to us. As join us with him as a seed of Abraham. Go forward and I put in Christ Jesus. Elevate, elevate and get out of every valley. I call you out of every valley in the name of Jesus. And come out on the rise up above in the earth as kings. As priests, as God have made you in him in Jesus' name. And God, I bind, Father God, the foul spirit of death and hell. And I command you never to return to our lives in the name of Jesus. Get out and stay out in the name of Jesus. You are under our feet to stay in Jesus' mighty name. And God, I call, Father God, favor upon us now. Favor God that we will be remembered. Favor that we will never be forgotten again, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Favor that will bring in our rewards, Father God, when we reserve them, Father God, in, in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you, God, that life comes to us today. That life come to our bloodline today. In the name of Jesus, life come to every of our lives. And I call back everything that death and hell have stolen from us. And I command them to come forth now in the name of Jesus. No longer bound. Any grave cloth, any grave clothes that have been placed on us. I command it to come off now. And I say be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose from all bondage in the name of Jesus. Be loose in Jesus mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray your blessings in Deuteronomy 28 over us for all who keep your commandments and obey them. I pray, Father God, that your blessings will come upon us and overtake us, Father God. And I declare that truly we are ahead and no longer uh, the, the tail. We are above and no longer beneath, Father God. And I declare everything our hands touch will prosper. And we will go, Father God, and in and possess our possessions in the beginning this 2023. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, I call in, Father God, into the business owners, Father God, wealth and riches, Father God. And they'll do right by you, Father God, with the proceeds, with the finances that you give to them, that they will ask you how to go about sowing and where to sow. In the name of Jesus, because I call in abundance. I call in overflow of more than enough. God, you have anointed us for overflow. New season, we've been anointed. Father God, we are now in our end season of overflow. And I call the overflow into the businesses. I call the overflow into everyone, Father, everyone under the sound of my voice. We live in overflow and never lack again. As I bind that spirit of lack off of us. And poverty out of our lives, out of us in the name of Jesus. Jesus became poor. But we don't have to. But we might be rich. So God, we take that, Father God. Wealth and riches I declare in our house today. And it will stay there in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you, Father God. That our rewards that are due to us, Father God, that we've lost, I ask you to call, I call them back. And I thank you for every reward, Father God, that we did not get. I call them back now in the name of Jesus. I call everything that was stolen and lost, Father God, taken. I call them back in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call in the homes. I call in the apartments. I call in the business buildings, Father God. I call in the lands. I call in the finances, Father God. I call in good health. Father God, long life, Father God. Everyone who say go to hell, they cancel those curses, Father God, no longer in hell. Father God, no longer in death. I cancel and break all of those curses spoken over us in the name of Jesus. As your pastor, Father God, as your woman servant, Father God, as your prophet, I speak life over your children today, Father God. And I say live in the name of Jesus. Live in the name of Jesus. Go forward and possess the land. Go forward and get your possessions. Go forward in Christ. And be what he has called you to be in the name of Jesus. I speak speed over everyone in here and over every situation in our lives. I speak speed, 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 advancement and growth in God. Go, 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 go in the name of Jesus. Every soul, it says our soul have been freed. We have been escaped from every prison house as the word of God says. And I declare us free out of every prison house in the name of Jesus. God, if there's any soul under the sound of my voice that is still fragmented, Lord, let your angels put, get every piece and put them together. As David said, restore my soul and make it whole. Restore every soul and make us whole in the name of Jesus. Bind the spirit of fear and worry and doubt and I uproot them and I cast them out of us. Out in the name of Jesus, you will no longer delay us. You will no longer bring fear that cause us not to move. As God speak to us that we will move in the name of Jesus. I bind you spirit of doubt. Double mindedness, I bind you, cast you out of us. Be gone and never return in the name of Jesus. He says, he who believe and doubt not, he shall have what he asks for. And God, we thank you that what we ask for today, we shall receive in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you this day, Father God, for deliverance has come to the house of God today. And free us, Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.